The world is not a perfect place. Too many people will go to bed hungry tonight, and tomorrow too many will not have clean water to drink when they wake up. If they get sick, millions of people will not have a modern hospital to go to. In sparkling Denver, you have to work hard to remind yourself of those facts. Meet Jim Jackson, who thinks about those things every day. Jackson made a fortune developing ski properties in the mountains, and while still a young man, came to a startling conclusion. There came a time in my life when, uh, when I realized it just wasn't worth the price that I was paying to accumulate and amass the fortune that was happening. And I made a promise to God. I just said, if you'll get me out of this rat race and make me a simple man again, I'll never use my talents again uh, to ever accumulate personally. I'll spend the rest of my life helping people around the world. And that is exactly what he did. That was 10 years ago, and Project Cure was born. Jim Jackson put in a lot of his own seed money, then started looking for desperately needed medical supplies. One of the first people who came to him for help was David Imporampora, a Rwandan who wanted to help his countrymen in a violent civil war. Jim not only offered help, he offered to go. Now, going to Rwanda is not like going to Hawaii, you know? You know, you're ducking bullets, wondering where another landmine might explode. You know, here's he is a... There. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was there with us in, in, through that pain. And, uh, you know, for a person like that, he could have said, well, um, uh, we will send things to Rwanda. You go do the assessment study. Tell me what you want. But he was there every blessed mile, every place to make sure that the need was legitimate. Uh, you know, we're talking about risking your life here, putting your life on the line. Daniel Johannes of Colorado National Bank heard about Project Cure and came looking for help for his native Ethiopia. What really attracted me about Project Cure and about Jim Jackson was the fact that they run with very, very, very little operating uh, you know, uh, budget. Most everything is done through volunteers, which was extremely attractive to me personally. At Stapleton, the crates stack up donated medical supplies that'll be moving out to countries all over the world. I'm looking at a huge airport hangar <laughs> filled with medical stuff. That's right. You didn't buy any of it. None of it. It's all given to That's you. That's right. That's right. You don't charge anybody for it. We've become, we've become beggars with ties on. Without pay and often financing a good portion of Project Cure's efforts out of his own investments, Jim Jackson has created a community model of volunteerism that has affected life-saving change in 60 countries around the world. Well, Project Cure really speaks to the humanitarian effort that many people have in their hearts in terms of how they want to provide assistance to someone and to people that are less fortunate. In this instance, it's not a dream, it's not a uh, vision, it's not a thought that someone has in their mind. It's something that actually takes place. It actually works. Jim Jackson who is redistributing life-saving items from those who have too much to those who have too little.